Nehemiah, I, I like Nehemiah's character. Now, I, I don't know that everything that he did was, was always right, but Nehemiah used some force as a governor to, to make sure things weren't happening, that he didn't want to have happen, things that were, that were sinful and that shouldn't have been happening. And in one of the instances, if you remember, right, right near the end, Nehemiah chapter 13, you know, he commanded that no one's going to do any work on the Sabbath day, right? And he made the proclamation, say, we're not going to do any work, we're going to honor the Sabbath day. And then what happened is that the merchants were still showing up. So, like, people from outside of the city were coming in. You know, foreigners were coming in. They were setting up shop. And he's like, what part of we're not working on the Sabbath day don't you understand? Right? So he locks the gates. And, and, he, and he just closes up the city. And he's like, no. Like, you're not coming in here. We're not working on the Sabbath day. And they still show up, like, at the gates. And it was kind of, like, hanging out outside. So Nehemiah talks to him. It says in, um, in verse 20, I'll just read these two verses for you. It says, so the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. So they show up now the first couple weeks. Then I testified against them and said unto them, why lodge you about the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. Now I'll tell you what, he wasn't saying, if you do so again, I'm going to ordain you and send you out with the power of God to go and preach somewhere. That's not what he's threatening them with. He's saying, I'm going to lay hands on you. From that time forth, they th came they no more on the Sabbath. <laughs> like, all right, <laughs> points, points taken. So that's, that's one of the things that you can read some of the other things that he did too. Like, like he, he, he was no joke. Nehemiah didn't mess around. He was saying, look, this ain't happening. I'm going to lay hands on you if, you if you come back again. So just be aware of that, you know, when you see the laying on of hands, you know, there, there are, you just got to gain it from the context. It's not, it's not a hard context to figure out, obviously, um, but just, just be aware of that when you read it. And then you're in Numbers chapter 11. I've actually had someone try to use a passage like this as justification again for just being self-ordained. And they'll say, well, you're just jealous, Right? That, that I'm doing this work, and you shouldn't be saying that, that I, you know, I'm doing it wrong or whatever. And if you're in Numbers 11, look at verse number 28. Don't let someone try to, to use this story in this context, because you got, you got to get the whole context. And, and once you see it, you're like, wow, that's exactly the completely opposite of what they're using it for, which is usually the case when people have bad doctrine. Look at uh, verse number 28, the Bible says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. So this is when there is people prophesying within the camp, okay, and they didn't show up to the tabernacle. So Joshua sees this, and he says, You know, Moses, forbid them. Forbid them from prophesying. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? Great answer, true answer, but let's look at the context of what is going on here and, what's, and what he's talking about because he's not talking about men deciding to ordain themselves to start churches and, and do some other work somewhere else. That's not what happened here at all. So to try to say, oh, well, good God that all the Lord, you know, yeah, would God they were all prophets, but they're not. It would be great if people can prophesy and preach. And I'm not forbidding people from preaching. I'm just saying if you want to pastor a church or if you want to be a missionary, do it the right way. Do it the way God's prescribed and get ordained to do that job. That's what I'm teaching. Moses was ordained and chosen of God. And in this passage, these men, we'll see this. These men that are preaching and prophesying, they were ordained of Moses already. 